Our school boy football look this season. People them ready, you know. All right then, he go, man in go. Only for your shield, you make me link up. We watch the champions cup, Ben Francis. Walk a cup, which team are win the championship this season. Yo, it's a Bobanda, if a school I go finish the league and beat now. Which you that go collect the golden boat and be the favorite for the people. So it is almost time for some of the most eagerly anticipated months of uh, Jamaican uh, sport on the calendar. The start of the Issa schoolboy football season just a day away. And it will begin in the parish of St. James at the Montego Bay Sports Complex in Catherine Hall. First up, reigning Manning Cup champions Mona High, coached by Craig Butler, will be taking on Waterford High. Then Rural Area Powerhouse and defending the Costa Cup champions Clarendon College will do battle against Denby High. Now, the action does not stop there for patrons either because the hometown boys, the most successful the Costa Cup team in history, 12-time champions, Cornwall College, will be taking on Herbert Morrison Technical. And who better to join us and tell us what's in store this season from a broadcast perspective than Phil Riley, Sportsmax lead producer for Issa Schoolboy Football. Phil, welcome to the Sportsmax Zone. Always great to have you on the show. And this is a uh, a part of the year where everyone gets excited and schoolboy football is as big as it gets on the Jamaican sporting landscape. How excited are you about this start on Saturday? I'm, I'm very excited. It's a lot of work, but I'm, I'm very excited. Why well, I'm excited because it's a chance to change another young man's life, to propel him forward. You know, so, I mean, so many of these, these guys will get to go on TV and people all over the world will get to see them and see their talent. So I'm, I'm very excited about that. Yeah, well, when this project started close to 10 years ago, Phil, that was the thinking behind this project, to put teenage talent on a platform that they could be seen globally. And we've seen tremendous results. Back-to-back -back seasons now, we have had players fresh out of a schoolboy football season getting contracts in England, one of them with Chelsea. Yes, I mean... You, you can only feel proud when you see things like that. Someone said to me last year that schoolboy football is the only place in the world where teenagers get to showcase their talent like this to the world. Yeah. And that, that touch man, it's not, it's, it wasn't a Jamaican. Mm -hmm. you know? So I never realized that up until that person said it. And I, I was like, yeah. You know, so, so the fact that we were able to, to get um, two players in, in two consecutive years into mainstream football in, in Europe yeah. is wonderful. Yeah. Talk to us too about the spread though of the coverage because I know many, many years ago teams from the, the rural area would complain that the general media would focus on the Kingston and St. Andrew teams in the Manning Cups far more than they would for the De Costa Cup teams. Um, which would be unfair because we've seen just as much talent, sometimes greater talent, outside of Kingston and St. Andrew coming from the Clarendon College and St. Elizabeth Technicals and so on and Rossies of this world and I'm dating back decades now. So what is the policy that Sportsmax has from a production standpoint to ensure that there is an even spread of these players on showcase? When I started producing in 2016, it was about 70-30. And I was, I was determined that we're going to get it to 50-50. And we've been able to do that um, consecutive season. I believe that this year we actually have more Doc Costa Cup games. In the first round now we have Body Cup games. Yeah. I know Mr. Wellington would smile at that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we, we, we've, deter we've been determined to, to balance the, the output for both competitions. And that has reaped um, great success. Yeah. Another thing that we've, we've done is to make sure that every year we expose another area of the country. You know, because we've, we've focused so much, you know, even when we moved to, yeah. from Kingston and St. Saint, Saint Andrew. Yeah. We, Clarendon, Montego Bay. Yes, yes. Yeah. So we preference. wanted to get into Trelawney, we wanted to get in St. Anne. Yeah. You know, last year we were able to, to show, showcase Portland and just watch, it, watch the TV, you'll see who, who next will be on, on TV this year. Yeah, and, and Sportsmax has to take some credit for this as well, Phil, because it is more costly financially to do out-of-town games than it is yes, it for. Is. So Sportsmax is bearing a cost to ensure that we get a good balance. Yes, and one of the things we do, I mean, our work 
doesn't start on September 7th. It starts before. We, we drive around the country and we look at facilities and we, we check them out, we look at fields and, and because we want to expand the game and we want, but we also want to put on TV what looks good. You know, so we want the schools to upgrade their facilities. We talk to them, talk to them about that. We, we, we look at the, the fact of wh whether we can broadcast from, from, from locations or not. And we, we pay the money to, to get the, the fiber in so that we can broadcast from these locations. So we have, we've done a, a great job in expanding the game, not just in Jamaica, but all over the world. Yeah, and you shared with us, you know, a bit about the behind the scenes groundwork that goes into schoolboy football. It's a very exciting product when you watch it on television. Now, talk to us about the work that actually goes with the broadcast team and who's going to be on this season? What are we to look forward to? Are you doing anything different when it comes to producing the shows? Um, what's in store for us? I mean, you've seen some of what we we're, we want to do this year. We've launched a brand new music video. Love it. That, yeah, I mean, we've only gotten good reviews from it. And um, that was actually a, an idea I had last year to do, but I decided to, to leave it on to this year. And um, I, I, must, I must big up the crew. I've done a, a, a fantastic job. You know, persons like Jason Sawyers and Shane Watson, those guys have, have, have worked tirelessly on that project. You know, and you know, we, we are excited about that. Actually, when we released the video, persons never knew that the, the song was out for a year already. Yeah. And the person was, oh, we like the song, you know? <laughs> but I was saying, hey, but the song has been out. But the video brought life to the song, you know? And so, so we're excited about that. And you know, other things that we've been doing, we are coming up with a brand new graphics pack for the- what? For the That's season. a lot of work, by the way, in case the viewers don't know. Yes, because <laughs> because I believe that we, 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 we should freshen up. Oh, you know, we've had this graphics box since 2018, so mm -hmm. we decided that we want to freshen it up some more. So, you know, that's it. Last year, we came up with a new montage, which, you know, everybody loved because we used the, the, some of the, the elements from school. You know, in Jamaica, everybody wears ties to school, so we... We, we, you know, people saw me walking around the office with, with ties in my head. Well, Phil, what are you doing? <laughs> and then we see the, the, the product of it. So we're excited about what, what will happen this year. Yeah, tell us a bit about the on-screen talent because what I know for sure is the viewers, um, they are very connected to who they see on the screen, right? And that happens because when you tune into your television and as a presenter, I never realized the impact that I had on so many people's lives until like you meet them on the street and they're like, what happened? I didn't see you last week. Um, were you feeling okay? They tune in now weekend after weekend, day after day to watch this schoolboy football. Who will we be seeing, Phil? So, <laughs> Gerard Morris Seeley from Barbados will be on screen and um, Kimani, who calls himself the goal, Kimani O'Sullivan, calls himself the goal connoisseur. <laughs> um, <laughs> and Jenny Robinson. So we, we, we have those hosts and we also have Donald, Donald Oliver, and we have Dwight Jeremiah, we have Chris Taylor. Um, we have Ligier, up and coming analyst, um, who has done really well, and um, we're we excited about that. We, we also have Dean Smith. It, it, it's happy when you see people grow, grow in roles. When you when you when you actually, you know, bring them in and they 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 come in and 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 do fantastic work. So we're excited mm. to have that team back this year. Mm. All right, we're going to head over to Ricardo Chambers now, who will be talking to Keith Wellington, president of ISSA, uh, to add some more context to the schoolboy football season starting off. Yeah, Ricardo, your time. Yeah, thanks very much, Lance. And just talking about growth, yeah, Keith Wellington is the perfect man to speak to. He is one of the most sought-after administrators in the country at this stage. Um, today, he's talking about ISA matters. And another day, he might be talking about other matters. But welcome to the Sports Mic Zone, Keith. Um, I see you're well prepared to... Um, help the reggae boys to a victory over Cuba in CONCACAF Nations League action later. Certainly, I want to enjoy some football. It, very much the case and you will get the, the opportunity to do that over four months with mm -hmm. the ISA schoolboy football season. You start in Montego Bay tomorrow, three matches as was pointed out earlier on. This is the first time since the COVID-19 pandemic that mm -hmm. we will have opening day in Montego Bay. Yes, the first time in what, five years and 
traditionally we have been in Montego Bay for our openings for maybe more than a decade and it has always been good. We expect that the people of Montego Bay and its environments will come out and support these youngsters. It's, it's been a while that they have been privy to the opening of the season and so we are really looking forward to tomorrow. Yeah, and set the stage for us in terms of what you expect the next four months to be like. Well, I, I like how Phil has presented what Sportsmax will do and we have had a really good relationship over the last decade or so. They have helped us to grow the competition, not just in terms of um, locally, but regionally. And certainly, I think that many of our players have benefited from the coverage. And so for us, what we want to, to, to do is to see our schools, our players lift the standards that they are exhibiting because they now know that it's not just your friends that are watching it's everybody globally at some point in time the coverage is going to help you to probably sell yourself not just for professional contracts but maybe for um, scholarships and so on last year one of the things that we ended the season with was our all manning all lacoste cup games and also a scholarship showcase this year we are we are going to expand that. We want to see the very best um, rise to the top and be rewarded at the end of the season. So we're expecting some exciting football, um, a number of changes in our rules and so on. Um, I think we'll, it will be interesting to see how some of the schools have adapted. Yeah, interesting that you spoke about um, changes in rules. And I know that quite possibly you are speaking um, specifically to some of those quarter and transfer rules. Right. Um, but there is one now that I, I understand is commonly being referred to as the six day rule. <laughs> and I think this is the most recent one where yes. you have said that players in schoolboy football can participate in the Jamaica Premier League, mm -hmm. but if they play a JPL game, then they will have to rest for six days right. before they can come back and play in the schoolboy football competitions. Now, the sporting director of the JPL champions, Cavalier, that's Mr. Roddell Speed, he came out recently and said, listen, that's just hypocrisy mm -hmm. on the part of Issa because it is regular for Issa to have schoolboys playing three games in a week and now you're saying well they can't play um within a six-day period how do you respond to that all right so everything is, is is your opinion should be based on context so let us start by reminding everyone that up until now um for the last few decades schoolboy footballers could not play club football while still actively engaged in um, they could not play club football while still actively engaged in our schoolboy competition. But so was that a rule or an understanding? It was an it was an understanding between both the JFF and ISA, and it was enforced. So okay. so we never had schoolboys playing both schoolboy football and um, Premier League simultaneously for the last I would say more than two decades. Um, so what we have actually done is to relax it, but we also understand that there may be conflict between club and school if there's no guidelines as to what should happen. Um, so right now, as things stand, you can play a schoolboy football um, game on Saturday and your club could ask you to play a club game sometime after, even the next day. We are saying that just to ensure that we are not taking disadvantage of um, our, our players, we want, if there's going to be a cross-pollination in terms of um, players playing both competitions, if you play, if you make a decision to play the club football, then the school is going to allow you to focus the rest and focus on your schoolwork for, for a week before bringing you back in, in their team. And to be honest, remember, no, you know, this will only affect a maximum, maximum, total maximum of 70 players because the clubs are not allowed to register more than five yeah. amateur players at a time. It will only also, it's, it's, it's really for a period of maybe six to seven weeks. So I don't know why the sporting director of Cavalier, well, I do know why the sporting director of Cavalier feels the way he does, but it's why really- Why is that? Um, obviously, he relies heavily on schoolboy um, talent, talent yeah. for his competition. Um, another thing to factor in is that normally, the Premier League starts maybe two, three weeks after the schoolboys football season, which would essentially mean that it's only one month that most of our players will be involved in schoolboy football while the, while the Premier League. So I don't, I really don't think it's a major issue. It may per, it may be an, a matter that hits close to Mr. Speed because of his his operations, but generally, 
I don't think it's a major issue. Let me ask you this though, why relax the rule any at all? If it was working where, and the understanding was in mm. place and everyone understood that if you play schoolboy mm. football, you cannot play Jamaica mm. Premier League mm. until your matches are finished in the SBF yeah. competition. What, why bother to change uh, that? I, it's, it's how we see things evolving. Mm -hmm. Um, when we look at the competition, we have now more schools, so we have 120 plus schools playing. We have more players who are at the school level who are now national players, and we figure that there are going to be times when it may be better for a player to be engaged in a club match rather than a school match where his team is winning 12 nil, 14 nil. So I know, for example, there's one specific player now, if he comes back to school, he's already a national player, has two seasons of eligibility in the, in the competition. Mm -hmm. I think that in his best interest, the school may decide that allow him to play. Is that a St. George's college player? At, uh, well, the last time I checked, he was. Uh, we know how things are now. The, that player, for example, maybe, maybe that school decides that, listen, allow him, he's a student here, will allow him to play club football for the first six weeks of the commission. Mm -hmm. But then we are going to need him for the latter stages. In the latter stages, by the way, there is usually five, six days between games. Mm -hmm. So he could actually play a semi-finals today for his school, play a club club game on the weekend and is available for the next game, which is a final or something. So, so, so it's all about creating options then for the player right. you're saying. So there, it, we, we, we agree that it's still a restriction, but it now provides an option and a choice without totally eliminating you being able to represent both club and school. Yeah, we don't have a lot of time, but I just want to get a quick comment from you because you spoke about the well, I said transfer rules and quota rules and so on, which I suspect you were speaking about. Um, we don't have time to get into the details of all of those rules. But one of the things I've heard is that there is a disconnect. So the rules are made by principals of the respective schools. You are a principal mm -hmm. of St. Elizabeth Technical and the president of ISSA and the other principals come together and mm -hmm. they um, finalize these rules. And I'm hearing when I go on the street that there is a disconnect between the rule makers and the coaches mm -hmm. um, who the principals essentially govern. Mm -hmm. Is that the case? I think, I think to some extent it would be true. Um, the coaches, maybe their, their mandate and their philosophy is different from their employers who are actually the principals. So essentially there's nowhere in the world where the workers set the rules and the guidelines for the workplace, it's usually the employers. And the principals are the employers and the rule makers. Yeah, well, well said. Keith Wellington, president of the Intersecondary School Sports Association. I'm pretty sure that's an issue we're going to be talking about a lot more over the course of the next four months. We'll change that, make that nine months. Yeah, Lance? Yeah, and just before we wrap this segment, I wanted to put a question to, to Phil Riley, our producer of Schoolboy Football, which is, is contentious, but it is an ongoing discussion where people talk about the quality of players today against the quality of players in the past. I know that in the 60s, Kingston College had some schoolboys that were real high quality players that could immediately make the, the national senior team. In the 70s, players like Noel Sweetest Smith, Lenny Hyde, uh, Martin Woodstock, then beyond that in the 80s, 90s, Ali Rose from St. George's College, Walter Boyd. And people are saying that generation or those generations were superior in natural talent and skill to today's schoolboy football. And I feel you're a student of football and you're never one to shy away from, from speaking your mind and speaking your opinion. Where do you stand on that? Is today's schoolboy footballer better, more gifted, more talented than the players of the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s? They're not more talented, they're more prepared. But I, I believe that because, and I will put it to this, this is how I normally answer this question. Back in the 80s and 90s, you had lesser teams playing. So in the Manning Cup, you had 19 teams playing. So the quality was concentrated with those 19. Now you have 39, 42. In, in the Costa Cup, it moved from 30 to 80-something. So there's a spread of, of the, the, the talent. And so some of those guys that are playing schoolboy football now would only play interform, you know. <laughs> so the, the quality is, is watered down. At the top now, mm -hmm. when you think of a Walter Boyd, you know, you know, I grew up watching Walter Boyd play. Yeah. I've never seen a schoolboy play like that. Even now? 
even now. Yes. So um, Dijon Whisper Richards. Very and good player. Dixon. Very, very good player. Very, very good players. Yes. The thing is, the opportunities are greater now. Because of well, Sports Max, yes. um, <laughs> the opportunities are greater. People are broadcast all over the world. You know, scouts, um, coaches can see players. I actually saw, you know, the fact that we are able to broadcast so far, I actually saw a coach from a, a college in the U.S. try to beg one of the managers here to send these players there. That never happened before. Yes. This year, that happened. Yes. You know, that's, so that's because of us, you know, sending the game as far and wide. But the talent level, the talent level, because it was concentrated, because the best players played for the best schools. Yes. I believe that the, the best players played in, the, in, in those times before. But I'm not taking away from the fact that Dujan, Whisper Richards and Kaim Dixon, they are special, yeah. Yeah. special, special players. And those players mm -hmm. could easily play amongst and would be considered among the best players in the 90s and the 80s. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 even, and even before And that. even before that. Yeah. Because their talent is, is, is that good. Scoring 30 odd goals yeah. is no joke. No, I, I don't know if I could score 30 odd goals in, in, in the <laughs> that, That's Phil Riley, a former, I'll have a goal scorer. a former top player for Cavalier in, in, in uh, domestic football here in Jamaica as well. Cavalier, of course, the current champions of Premier League football in Jamaica. Um, thanks, Phil, for checking in with us. Uh, Keith Wellington, president of ISA, had the chat with the Ricardo Chambers as well. So while TNT schoolboy football season kicked off this afternoon, we'll talk about that in a moment. Jamaica schoolboy football season starts on Saturday, and it's going to be a bumper crowd. We expect at the Montego Bay Sports Complex to watch the opening matches and follow the season for the next couple of months. We go to break. We'll be back with more on the Sports Mat Zone after this. Yo, Issa, my schoolboy football look